Hi bookends! Welcome to this week's 10 minute book review. I'm 10, so this review is going to be done on Tuesday the 5th of February because today is the day that Ladies Smoke by Laura Sebastian comes out. So uh, we were able to get an advanced copy or an ARC advanced reader copy for the purpose of review this review is open and honest if you've watched our channel before you'll know that uh, Tu and I loved the first book in the series The Ash Princess and uh, we were so happy to read the second book in the series this will be a spoiler free review so basically we're just gonna hit on some of the points of the book why we love it and why we're looking forward to the next one so to get started, um, if you're familiar with the first book, The Ash Princess, Theodosia uh, is in this book as well. So if you haven't read uh, The Ash Princess, basically Theodosia, uh, her land was taken over and the people who took over her land murdered her mother and kept her around kind of as a trophy and she'd have to wear like a crown made of crumbling ash so it would crumble all over her face as a way of saying ha ha you lost um her mother was also known as the fire queen so it was kind of like ha the fire queen has given birth to the ash princess kind of a way to rub it in that you know her people have fallen also too she'd be viciously whipped whenever her people tried to fight back and it would be done publicly so everyone would see it happen to her uh flash forward to this book lady smoke Theodosia is free and she is a queen now because she's taken her rightful place although she's not on the throne um, because the people who overtook her land are still there. So right now she's with her aunt Dragonsbane who is a pirate and happens to be her mother's twin sister. Oh. So she's on her boat or her uh, band with her band of pirates and they're headed out to another land to try to get her support. Now here's where the problem comes in. A fire queen is never married. A fire queen never has a husband. She rules by herself. So the only way for Theodosia to get support would be if she was to marry someone. So of course Theodosia has a problem with this. Let's move into the other players. So Blaze is also in this book. In the original book, he uh, tried to help Theodosia escape from the castle from where she was being held. They were childhood friends. They were playmates when they were little and Theodosia even mused that if their kingdom had never fallen, she would probably be with him in a relationship, but of course not in a marriage. So he's in this book as well. And uh, some cute points. She can't really sleep. She's having a problem sleeping because she keeps having nightmares about her last time uh, with her best friend turned mortal enemy, Crescentia. And how the girl was just, her skin looked like it was flaking. Her hair was white. You know, she basically looks like an ash queen herself, literally. Um, so she has nightmares about him. So she's like, you know, Blaze, can you sleep with me? Not like that. But, you know, lay with her. Keep her company. And so he does it because he loves her. Right? There's something sad about Blaze, but we'll get to that later. Also, Soren is there. So Soren in the original book was the Kaiser's son. So he's the Prinz with a Z. P-R-I-N-Z. Prinz. Which doesn't necessarily make him the next ruler, but it makes him the most basically the one that people would think to be the the next ruler even though he doesn't necessarily have to be he fell in love with Theodosia in the first book although Theodosia wasn't really in love with him uh, she had to kind of play him out a little bit so that he could get her to where she needed to be but she had to do it she had no choice really because you know she was in that kind of a position so he's been taken captive by her aunt Dragon's Bane and so 
he's with her in the second book. What I love is that it's still no love triangle. She still thinks of him fondly. He still thinks of her fondly, but it's not in a romantic sense. It's as in a friend sense. Like he tries to take care of her in the way that a friend would take care of another friend, not in the way that a romantic partner would take care of another romantic partner. Blaze more so fills that role. So there's still no love triangles. No love triangles. So. Uh, in the second book, he kind of acts as her worldly advisor in the way that he understands how the different courts of the world work. Because, of course, he's a friend, so he had to go into these courts and talk to these people, you know, so he's aware of how these things work. She isn't. Next, we have uh, Artemisia. Artemisia from the first book was one of the people who was trying to help Theodosia uh, that Blaze, that was what Blaze. She is, I mean they don't really say the word cousin in the book but she's really Theodosia's cousin because she's Dragon Bane's daughter. So she's her cousin and she's still the same sharp mouth person but she still has the same good heart core at the you know center of her. In this we get to see how her and her mother interact. So like she's this sharp witch, strong person when it comes to everyone else. But as soon as Dragon Bane walks in the room, all that's gone. She's quiet, she's mousy, yes mother, no mother. You know, so she doesn't have any power when it comes to Dragon's Bane. Her mom. Next we have Heron. Heron was one of the originals as well from the main book. Um, if you recall his backstory in the main book, he was in love with another boy. That boy got, um, he caught Mind Madness. So we don't read this in the other book, it's just a part of his backstory. And But the boy caught M Mind Madness and he was taken away, presumably killed. We find out though that people who caught Mind Madness are actually being used as weapons called Berserkers. So Heron believes that perhaps the boy that he fell in love with was never killed. Perhaps he is a berserker who has yet to be used in war. And if that's the case, he wants Soren to tell him where he is so that he can get to him. Now the problem with this is that people who have gone through mind madness, there's no proof that they can go back. You know, once they go insane, there's no proof that there's a way to bring them out of that insanity. Uh, here's something that bothers me not about the book itself but because I am so team blaze <sighs> okay when someone has mind madness one of the first signs of it is oh, or I should say one of the early onset signs of it is that they have a heat to them a heat that won't go away so it's like they have a constant fever and every time Theodosia is with Blaze, she can feel the heat coming off of him. And she's afraid that he might have mind madness. Um, Heron's afraid that he might have mind madness. <sighs> but no one really wants to, to say it. Even though Blaze has not acted crazy in any way, shape, or form, or acted as though he's out of his faculties in any way. So, you know, I'm hoping that it turns out that he doesn't. Also, too, so in the first book, right, Theodosia was attracted to fire. So the, the knight that she thought was her dad, he was a fire knight as well. So you can be either fire, water, which Artemisia is. She's able to control water. Um, air, which Heron is is he's able to make himself invisible or earth which blazes basically able to create earthquakes control rocks things like that so her father or who the man she believed to be her father the one that she was forced to murder in the first book um was a fire knight now here's the thing if you're a queen you're not able you're not supposed to be able to control any of these elements with one of the stones that that's uh, available with the gems that they use she feels a calling to fire but here's 
the thing. So you're only able to use these powers if you have uh, a gem because it there's something in the gem that works in conjunction with something in the person's blood that allows them to be able to perform these amazing feats. But it has to be those two things. It has to be the person who can do it and the gem that goes along with the thing that could be done. Theodosia like singes her sheet. She's having a nightmare in this book and she singes her sheets because she's grabbing her sheets so hard she singes them. She has no fire gem with her. So it's like okay what do we have here? Uh, the book itself, I would definitely rate this a 10 just because I think the author maintained fluidity between this book and the previous book, which means, I don't know, have you ever read like a trilogy and, you know, you're, you finish off the first book, like A, 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 like all A, you finish off the first book get to the second book b b b b fine get to the third book f g y like you wait wait a minute what happened to c like this doesn't make any sense how do we get from this to this to all the way over here so the author maintained fluidity theodosia is still royalty Theodosia is still in love with Blaze. Theodosia still has feelings for Soren, even though they're not romantic in nature, they're friendship, more so deep friendship. Soren still has feelings for Theodosia, but I believe he's understanding that there's nothing more to be made of it. You know, and all the characters remain in character. None of them are doing anything that's out of character or that wouldn't make sense in the position that they're in. Theodosia does some, some odd stuff, but that's Theodosia, so she remains in character. Um, usually we do this at the beginning of the video. So yes, uh, 10 for a star point for a rating. So usually it's 10, you know, 1 to 10 stars, and this is a 10. For a rating, I would give this a... I'd give it a PG. Because there's nothing particularly graphic in it. The description of Crescentia. And oh my god. What Crescentia does. This girl is a savage. Like in the first one. She was like oh prissy prissy pretty pretty. This girl is a savage. Now. When you see. Her, like. Mm, when you read this book. And it's Cress's turn. You're going to be like Wait. Yeah, now, like I said before about the author maintaining continuality or continuity, sorry, maintaining continuity, it makes sense. Cress is bitter. She was in love with, I don't think she was really in love with Soren. I just think she knew Soren was her next step in life. And in her mind, Soren ran off with Theodosia. And so it's like Theodosia stole her chance to be a princess or uh, I forget what a princess is called in the book, but he, she stole her chance. So, you know, she's better. And then, of course, she has this power of fire, too, which is odd because her people aren't supposed to have it. So I, I'm interested. I'm interested to find out how this is explained in book three. Also, I'm happy to see that there was technology mentioned because I hate magic, hate magic hate it so i love that there is a uh, technology mention like they go to the uh land of let me just make sure i'm saying it right sta crevero sta crevero sta crevero and they're very technology forward um yeah sorry still feeling a little sick myself so theodosia sees everything that they have like the white pavement that never gets dirty, the large buildings, and she's like, wow, these people have magic, and they're like, no, we have technology. So I would think of it as someone who's not used to perhaps something like New York City, how there's huge buildings, or someplace like Chicago, 
or hmm what is that place I thought was beautiful since I think it was Cincinnati I could be wrong but basically it's some place that looks like an architectural marvel but a modern um, architectural marvel marvel so if you take someone who's never seen a, a building that's more than two stories high and you bring them to New York, they're going to be like, oh my God, how did this happen? So that's kind of how Theodosia acts when she gets there. So it, I love how they explain, like, this isn't magic. This is technology. We work hard for all of this. They even have elevators. And it's so interesting because the, the people who pull the elevators are like strong men. Like, you know, the strong men in the circus. So, or... I, I kind of envision one of them look like John Cena because like they're really really buff dudes and all they do is crank this this turn in my mind I saw a um do 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 just because I am talking a gear okay so in my mind I saw like a gear with a crank on it that they just kept pulling and pulling and pulling and that's how the elevators move higher and higher and higher so they even had that in it which is which is interesting because it's like the book almost has like a 16th century 15th century feel I don't know if if elevators existed back then or maybe some version of it did I don't know but um, all in all, this was a really, really good book. Um, towards the end, you're going to be like, oh, snap. Like, Theodosia. So in the first book, Theodosia is kind of mousy because she's been beaten since the age of six by these people. So now she's like, no, not anymore. Not today. Not me. And Cress is, Crescentia, she's like, bring it. I never liked you anyway. So it, it gets really interesting. It gets really interesting. My heart is breaking in regards to Blaze. I'm not going to go too much into that. But I'm hoping for a better day in the third book. I'm hoping that things work out. I really... Oh, God. I'd be so heartbroken if anything happened to him. Because I like him. I like him a lot. Also, I'd love to see a... Um, I would love to see a novella for these books. Like maybe with Theodosia's mom and with her father so we can figure out exactly who is her dad. I don't know. Anyway, long story short, the book is good. It maintains continuity. The characters remain themselves and do things that they would normally do. The plot is strong. Um, if you're looking for action, there's not a lot of action in this book. It's more so diplomatic games. And yeah, the action comes towards the end of the book and it is some action. Cress Theodosia. It is some action. Let me tell you. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you've seen, please like and subscribe. Uh, don't forget to tune in on Wednesday for our Blackathon video, the very first one, which will be on perfect peace by daniel black thank you once again and have a wonderful day bye don't forget to pick up your copy bye